process. So one of the first things you need to do is balance the reaction equation for propane. We've done this a couple of times. C3H8 plus some source of oxygen. We're going to get it from air, so we brag, tag along the nitrogen. And we can balance the carbon dioxide right away. And we take a look, see if we can balance the hydrogen right away. So this is 6, this is 4, add that together, that's 10. So this will be 5. 5, 3.76N2s right there. Okay, now, if I multiply this out, it's 18.8 .8 nitrogens. 18.8 .8 nitrogens. So this is, we, we have no leftover oxygen for the 100% theoretical error. It's zero. But if you do have 200% theoretical error, then we would multiply this by 2. We'd multiply this by 2. I mean, that's getting a little messy there. Multiply that by 2, we'd have twice as much oxygen, I mean nitrogen, and we would have 502s left over for the 200% theoretical error. Do you follow that? We uh, want to calculate that adiabatic flame temperature. We go to the first law for this reaction. We have 0 is equal to the standard enthalpy of combustion for that fuel plus the sum over all the products, the stoichiometric coefficient, the molar enthalpy at that unknown, I'll, I'll put it right here, temperature, adiabatic flame. It's a, that molar enthalpy is a function of the adiabatic flame temperature at the exit and it comes in at 298 or that's the reference. And then I'm not going to write the sum over the reactants because the reactants come in at standard conditions. Okay. Uh, here's another question. This term right here. The what is that called again? This term right here? Yeah, standard enthalpy of combustion? Here. So how was this defined? HRP bar naught. Is it the sum, stoichiometric coefficient, enthalpy of formation, standard enthalpy of formation over all the products, minus the sum, stoichiometric coefficient, enthalpy of formation over all the reactants? If you have more air, it increases the amount of oxygen and the amount of nitrogen that go out in the products, true? But what is the enthalpy of formation of oxygen and enthalpy of formation of the nitrogen? Zero. So the amount of oxygen and the amount of nitrogen, either as reactants or as products, doesn't matter. So really this is for the fuel, not for not for excess or deficient air, okay? So that we compute this once. And so if I wanted to compute it once for this fuel, which is uh, propane, what I would do is I would sum over, let me write it out down here, so I'd have the standard enthalpy of combustion. I would have for each of the products, what I'd have is I'd have three enthalpy formations of uh, CO2. I'd have four enthalpy formation H2O and that's going to go out vapor or gaseous, okay? I know that there's different enthalpy formation, liquid, water, or water vapor. We'll pick the water vapor here. And minus for the reactants, one times enthalpy of formation for that fuel, C3H8. And so when we compute this number for this problem, you get negative 2,043,990 kilojoules per kilomole. 
so what we have to do is we have to, uh, if you want, I'll do it, write it this way. I'll put negative HRP bar not equal to, and I'll expand that sum. That sum is going to be 3 times the enthalpy at the adiabatic flame temperature minus the standard enthalpy at 298. 4 carbon dioxide plus 4 more enthalpy at the adiabatic flame temperature minus 298 for H2O vapor plus and now I'm kind of running out of room I hate to do that I'm going to say some unknown coefficient like 5 times the enthalpy formation, the adiabatic flame temperature, minus the molar enthalpy at 298 for O2, and then whatever, 2 times 18.8 times enthalpy temperature, adiabatic flame, minus the molar enthalpy at 298 nitrogen. Now, this coefficient here, 5 and 2, really only depends for the 200 percent. If it's part A, it's this, this is 0, and this 2 is 1. True? But you see the difference between part A and part B. Well, this is one of those exercises of going into the tables and getting the numbers out. So, you go to the table and you say, I have carbon dioxide and I have it at 298, so I need that molar enthalpy right there. And then I don't know the adiabatic flame temperature coming out. Is it 2000? Is it 2400? Is it 3000? What, what temperature does it go out at? So I look back at this equation and I see, oh, I'm going to have to get the enthalpy at the adiabatic flame temperature for CO2. I'll have to get the molar enthalpy at the adiabatic flame temperature for water. I'll have to do the same thing for oxygen and for nitrogen. So in the table, carbon dioxide, the water, the oxygen, the nitrogen. But we don't know the adiabatic flame temperature. What strategy do we use? Guess and iterate root finding. What do you do? You would say, let's assume it's 2000. I'd grab that value of H, that value of H, that value of H, that value of H. I'd make the computation. And when I use the value of, uh, of 2000 Kelvin for the adiabatic flame temperature, we found that the whole equation uh, was not equal to zero, but was negative 423,463. It's as if this was Q dot divided by N dot F that would be needed to satisfy the first law. It's not zero. I'm looking for that to be zero. It's not adiabatic. It's as if there was some heat transfer. I guess 3,000. Try to bracket it. Just try to bracket it. So then we come in and we find that, that now it's like it's 663,510 kilojoules per kilomole, kilojoules per kilomole. So we bracketed it. We want this to be zero. Q dot uh, divided by N dot F, we want that to be zero. So what's our next best estimate? You would do linear interpolation. It's like bisection method. And so instead of using 2,000 or 3,000, you'd use a temperature of 2390. And then you go in and you could evaluate it. At this point, I'm going to say that if you iterate about two, two more times, you'll have 2394 as the Kelvin. It's the temperature. You could have stopped right there, and it would be fine. Just one high, one low. 
and do an interpolation between the two to make it go to zero. It's fairly linear. So somebody at first suggested, let's get some specific heats. That's a great strategy. Okay? That'll work as well. But I wanted to show you this. Okay? Now, let's go back. So part A, we got the temperature to be 2394 Kelvin for part A. If you now double the air, what will the temperature do? The adiabatic flame temperature. The temperature, adiabatic flame temperature, when you have 200% is 1510 Kelvin. It goes down. Goes down quite a bit, doesn't it? 